The DSTV Premiership is back and the biggest team in South African football is going to be playing against Chipper United in Durban. This is a video I'm recording on Saturday the 5th of August and I'm about to get on a bus in a few hours to go to Durban to watch KZ Chiefs and then come back on Sunday night and arrive in Joburg at 5am and then go to work at 7. The things we do for this club. Anyways, in this video, we are going to preview the game, look at the players who are injured, look at what is happening with this game, preview Nsegi Paul and talk about what the coach of Chipper United is planning to do with the KZ Chiefs and also look at the lineup and also do score predictions. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Hello and welcome to Coast Nation Fan TV. I am Bilo, I am your host, and this, this is where fans meet and talk about KZ Chiefs. I'm a Kusi football club. Right, you heard me. I was talked about Uguta will be at the stadium. So for those of you who will be at the stadium, make sure Uguti we meet after the game. And then we are going to do post-match interviews with you guys because I will be interested to hear what you think about the game as well. So yeah, let's go. Right, let's start with injuries, two EKs Chiefs that are happening. So the first one being the fact that we don't have Udoli, he's been injured. What confuses me, I'm not sure whether it's the injury that he had from last season or did he pick up another injury, but still, he's not available. Udupri, we saw him coming back in coming back uh, in the game that we played against the Rollers, so there's a possibility of his inclusion. Uranga also, he didn't play at all during the preseason which means there might still be a problem there. Ulemod is not injured, but he's with his family because his mother passed away. Once again, condolences to his family. And Utoven or Solomon's there, I doubt, because remember, Utoven looked like he pulled the hamstring or something. Solomon's had that uh, head injury, but I think it's fine by now. But the way I saw them being involved in the, um, what's this thing, in the PR sort of things, they were Edukos FM, and then after that, I saw them somewhere. I don't even, I'm not even sure if there was Ukos FM. And then I saw them again with this engagement that was happening in Teben. So it's possible good they're not part of the team that's going to be playing. But we're going to see. But there I doubt. Speaking of doubts, uh, since Uranga is, uh, is an injured player and is our only striker, and Uke Lebna has not been involved in the at the beginning of the season, and I think the Chiefs will just end up releasing him because they tried to sell him but they ended up not doing that there has been a new player it's not really a new player but to Milaz, Yakumbula Ugutu Milaz was also loaned out last season to Kazrik Stars if I'm not mistaken and he's also he plays as a forward and the case the Chiefs has, have also called him up to start practicing with the senior team I guess so that he can be a backup in case well not in case since Uranga it's clear Ugutu is unavailable and is unlikely to start uh, tomorrow's game. As such, Umilaze, I think, is just there to be around the team. Because also, the other thing that you have to think about, in case the Chiefs at this point, they are also thinking realistically, Uguti, knowing themselves and knowing Uguti, they are likely not going to sign someone. Because if you didn't know, by the way, Ukabatino Mango has been confirmed and signed by Morocco Swallows, so he's definitely not coming to Ikeza Chiefs. He was offered to Ikeza Chiefs, but the case achieves past that opportunity to sign him. Anyways, so Milazi is going to be there as a backup of a striker. Uduba is still there. So knowing the Chiefs, they don't want to spend on a striker most probably. Then what might end up happening or what will likely end up happening is that Umilazi Vela will stay there and train with the, nation, with the senior team in the role of Uduba. Hopefully, if they are promoting Umilazi or they are keeping Umilazi with the senior team, then that should mean Uduba will now be more involved in playing and not just sit on the bench and come on with five minutes to go in the game. So that's the good thing, Guti. Because we've always complained, right? Me and a personal, I've always said this, Guti. I've never liked this idea of having these players from development get loaned out to um, Ama Team Zagumvela or Glad Africa. It's not even Glad Africa. Is it still Glad Africa? It's Mutsabe Foundation. Mutsabe Foundation League, and then they disappear, or we never see them again. So. I'm glad and I hope they can end up doing something for him as being part of the team. But again, knowing Chiefs, it might just be them bringing, up, bringing him up 
to the team so that they can then let him go again on a loan to another team. But we will see. Uh, also, I've touched on Ndabaga Kabatino Mango, which is definitely not coming to each Chiefs. But let's look at the game again now. Let's look at the game itself. Before we look at the game itself, let's also look at the number of subscribers that we have. And let's make sure that number increase. Let's subscribe to the channel. Let's like the video. Those are the things that help me to reach more people like you who are interested in Kaiser Chiefs content. This channel is purely Kaiser Chiefs content. I don't talk about anything else but Kaiser Chiefs. So if you want uninterrupted every day, daily, that's redundant. If you want daily Kaiser Chiefs content, including match previews since the season, season is back, uh, discussions about rumors and all that stuff, this is where you get that stuff. And match reactions from the fans, which we are going to start doing tomorrow, which I think is cool. This is the channel, so please subscribe. The 65% of you are not subscribed. Why are you not subscribed? Do it. Thank you so much for subscribing. So we said now we're going to talk about the game itself. And mind games with Umnum Zanuma Mila started a long time ago. They didn't even start like this week building up to the game. I think already two weeks back, the man <laughs> the man had already said, ah, we know Chiefs. <laughs> there is there is this thing, ne? There is this thing that people say about Umamila. They say it disrespects Chiefs. I don't think it's disrespect. I can only categorize it to two things. One, him coming out and saying we know how Chiefs plays. It's because everyone knows how Chiefs plays. Everybody knows how Chiefs plays. If I ask you how does Chiefs play these days, you are going to say they try to kick the ball to their speedy wingers. Everyone knows. This is not disrespect. This is just truth. We know. Everybody knows. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like a new thing. It's not a new thing. We see this. We see this week in, week out. This is how Chiefs have decided to play. They kick the ball. And Umar Mila, he just came out and said, yeah, we know how they play. And we'll be ready for them. And here's the thing. Here's the thing with Umar Mila. There could be Uguti is just stating facts, which is the fact. But also, remember. This is football, and one of the things that helped Pito Msimane to be the coach that he is, one of the things that made him great is because when he was with a coach like Ernst Mindendorp, remember, in the 1920 season, and then, by the way, oh yeah, I'm not even gonna, the 1920 season, Pito is there just playing man games on Ernst Mindendorp, talking about whenever he was about to play Chiefs, he would get in the heads of the refs and talk about how the refs gives Chiefs penalties, how this and that. Mind games, it's football. We shouldn't take these things personal. No, it's just mind games. And knowing what he Chiefs achieves. Uma Miller, these things that he speaks. Last year, we thought we had pretty cheap. We scored the first goal. La Pemosis Mapita was celebrating Fanagangezana. Yabui cheap. I had one, I had two. Saliu. So that coach has beaten the Chiefs before. He has won a game against the Chiefs. So to think uh, what he said is invalid would be very naive. And uh, uh, underestimating Chippa United would be very naive and, and, and just arrogant. Because also, Guatina, if we had seen what Chiefs have been doing in the preseason, then it's easy for us to say Asoba crash, right? But Ebola have seen, you don't win because of your name. You win because of how you approach the game and how you play it. Speaking of which, let's go to the lineup, let's go to the system, and let's talk about that. I, I think this, 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 nah, this, this segue, this way that I just segued from talking about that to this, it's so good. It's redundant again, right? Because I just, yeah, to me, I like, I like encouraging myself when I when I record videos, and I like being awkward on camera because. This thing of always faking as if I'm always confident. I'm not always confident. Anyways, let's look at Kiza Chiefs. Come live in Segi. Let's look at Kiza Chiefs. Because essentially, it's the same thing. <laughs> it is the same thing. It is the same thing. You know what? And and here's the thing. Zwane and Segi have worked together. with Bafana Bafana before. And Vele, you look at a coach like, I'm going to make a coach, an example like Pep Guardiola. Pep Guardiola learned everything that he knows from the guy called Johan Cruyff. If you are an OG, 
you know Gucci and Cruyff, Cruyff uh, is one of the goats in, in, in football from Netherlands. So he was very good and he coached Barcelona. And from there, U Pep Guardiola learned a lot from Johan Cruyff. And U Pep Guardiola was coaching with Mikel Arteta. And Mikel Arteta learned from U Pep Guardiola. He was also good on his own, but he also learned things from Guardiola and ended up coaching Arsenal. Arsenal last season that ended up being second in the league. I think my injuries to their key players, mainly being Usaliba, their defender, affected where Arsenal ended up. But the point is, you can see that there is a trend. Coaches that have worked together, they adapt certain things and they end up playing in a similar style. Which is to say, not to go to is coping Uzwane, but I'm saying there's a possibility of Uzwane, some of the things that he did, he copied or not copied, sampled, that's the better word, or learned or modeled, that's the better word. He modeled them after what he saw from Unsegi because he wasn't going to agree to working with Unsegi, coaching in Bafana Bafana if it wasn't for Uguti. They agree and they see football and they feel up the footballing philosophy or whatever there is alliance, right? Because you're not going to work with someone unless you agree with them. So, unless you are really desperate. Anyways, which was when I wasn't in that case. So now, you see the same system that Unsegi plays. 4 2 three, one is the same system that Uzwane played 4 2 three, one. That's the first thing. So what happens in this 4 2 three, one year chiefs? Well, 4 2 three, one year chiefs, see, which I'm not... I tried showing you my tactical board, but I realized good people didn't really care. So I'm just going to speak it. We 4 2 three, one year chiefs, see, last season, the initial thing that they tried to do, which I think they should still continue before I talk about the personnel that they are going to use, was they also tried to take the left back and push them into midfield so that he adds numbers in case we are being countered. And also why I thought that could work and would have worked well for each Chiefs is because the person who was playing left back for each Chiefs at the time was Usfis Oshanti. And Usfis Oshanti cannot run up and down the entire game. So for him to just drop into midfield, it actually makes more sense or made more sense when they were doing it but it doesn't seem like they are doing it so far this season because what we've seen from Shandi so far this season is that he overlaps, he goes further up, and then he puts on crosses. And yes, he did put on a lot of crosses as well last year and this season as well. Not this season, this preseason. We've seen him putting a lot of crosses from the wide areas and, and some of them look really dangerous. The only problem I have with that, because now we're just talking about the left side of the field, the only problem that I've had with that is that sometimes, one, the players are not making the correct runs in the box. So you'll find Uguti, maybe both of them are running to the near post. Or maybe both of them are in the far post and there's no one waiting. Or, to make it worse, there's only one player in the box. Or, they are playing aerial balls and we're not, we don't have people who are aerially dominant. So sometimes the strategy is Uguti are putting and making your left back overlap. And then they are going to play crosses. But you look at the strikers that we have. We saw even Guitab. We have, we have not seen Usail ahead. Caleb has struggled. Chiefs does not have aerial players. And also, if that becomes our most relied on method of attack, then it makes us predictable. Because all they know, all we have to do is play E442. If we're playing 442, we are going to squeeze in our defender to four. Then we are going to push our midfielders to, to drop back and basically make a, a six. In that six, then you have a long and a straight wall that is preventing crosses. And if somehow you do succeed in crossing that ball, and then we have players who are more early dominant than you because we've just filled him in epoxy to with our central defenders and we've pushed in right back here to now left back here to inside. And then we are pulling our midfielders to to account for any overload that you might try in the wings, and then you drop your number number six, you drop one striker, you leave one striker up front, and then you hit them on account. That's just another thing that teams have done to Chiefs. If you looked at how Sekukuna plays against Chiefs, if you look at how other teams like Abostel and Bosch do Chiefs, they will just do that, drop one person up front, and then they know Chiefs is going to commit everyone forward and try these crosses and then it's easy to turn over balls, and then they attack us. So that's one way that we've been using our left back. Same way that we've been using our right back, which is slightly better though with the right backs, because somehow in our right back position, 
I think what has been working is the fact that the people who are playing right back, they, I'm not saying Hunt is bad, I'm saying Wuti, if you take Solomon's, the good from his side is that he can dribble and take on people. So those big walls and whatnot that they're making, at least with Solomon's from his side, we are not trying to quickly play crosses. Instead, they are trying to take on players. And usually that is what would happen. If Good Dupree was also playing with Solomon's on the right, what would end up happening? They take on people, they pass the ball, then they make hammer combinations, then they can get the ball into the box. But at least at the, in that case, you have tried to pull the midfielder, you've beat Tom Triblish or Pascal Solomon. Solomon's up to the, the left back, then I cut the ball back, which happened very well when Umtu was there because you have the right back overlapping, you have the winger there, you have the number 10, which was Umtu Tuzim Shabalala, also dragging to the right. So in a way now it's 3v2 on the right. And the moment that happens, it's either one of the center backs is going to drop to the left or one of the midfielders is going to follow him to opening space in the midfield. And then that's where you usually would get these balls, pass back to Matt and then Umat come up and shoot the ball over the, over the post. But those are the things that usually kind of worked when we're overloading the sides. Hopefully they continue with that because that at least gives us something which we try to beat players, we play those combinations, we overload the sides and then we can bring the ball back because now they are a bit disorganized. That is what, that's the bright side of the Nseki ball or Zwane ball that they've tried to do. On the other thing, with Ama Center Picks 8 Valley, the other mistake that we had, the other problem that we had is that they were struggling. They were really struggling to play the ball from the back. Even him, Simang was very comfortable on the ball. UTT, <laughs> our new signing. I, I can't say his full name. That's why I just say TT, by the way. I haven't, I, I can't say I'm sure because from coming from Super Sport, I won't lie and say I watched a lot of his games. I know Guti is good defensively, but on the ball, I won't say I know Guti is great and he's really level like giving him Simang. So that's, that, that remains to be seen. Because that was one of the things that Chiefs also tried to do, trying to play the ball from the back and then progressing the ball in those ways. But basically, that's an overview of how Chiefs tries to attack. And the other way that Chiefs tries to attack is obviously get the ball, give it to Kevin Msimango. If the team that we are playing against presses us, I'm saying Kevin Msimango because now he's going to be playing. Teams try to press us in the preseason, then we play the ball over the top and then we try to be accurate. Also, I saw another thing, same thing of that nature that they tried to do. Last season, Usam Gelozwan was doing that. Ustebe did that. Umat did that. All the time to try and find that diagonal pass. You get the ball on the right, and then the winger stays as wide as possible. Then they switch the ball to them all the time. And now Castillo has started doing the same thing. It's just that Yena is doing it with much more accuracy. Finding those diagonal passes, and it's so great. But the problem is, I hope that's not the only way that we are going to try and approach the games that we are going to be playing. Maybe a combination of all these situations, Uguti, if it's cheaper coming out and are disrespectful and they're playing a high line, then we're using those diagonal passes, we're using those balls over the top to make sure that you exploit their defenses. That's Nsegi ball. The problem though is that we've been making a lot of mistakes at the back, conceding stupid and silly goals and failing to recover quick enough when we're going back with Zwane Paul. And as we have established, Zwane Paul is in Sagi Paul. So let's look at the personnel that I think will be starting, not the personnel that I want to start. This is my prediction. So goalkeeper, Peterson, it's clear. Uh, right back, Reeve is going to be the, the starter because if Solomon's is unavailable, but in any case, I think the defense will Reeve over Solomon's. We saw it even last season. Given him Simango, Titlok, we are going to be playing as well. And then as a left back, Ushanti, whether, whether Utov is injured or not. And then in midfield, there's Edson Castillo and there's Yusuf Matt. It's going to happen. And then as a, as a right winger, this is where it's going to get interesting. Ne? Right winger, if Utov is available, he's starting in that position. But if he's not available, then I see either Umtansane or um, or Unjab, Unkosing Pile Ngobu starting in that position. And one of them will play as a 10 and one of them will play as a wing. It's up to the coaches. I don't know which one they will do. I think it would make more sense for Ngobu Machine because he's had the best preseason. 
to be the one playing a 10 because he's more creative. I would even go as far as to say, I wouldn't mind to see Mutans and starting on the bench because, yeah, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't because he hasn't, he hasn't showed Uguti, no, he's going to destroy and whatnot. But if he can watch the team play and then come in and make a difference, then he can be a good player in that. But knowing the coaches that we have, Mutans and Nongobo will probably both start. And then on the other wing, which is the left wing, Umtu also had a very good preseason, so I think he's also the other player who's going to play in that wing. This also depends once again on Utupri, because if Utupri is available, then between Umtu and Umtansana, one of them are not going to play. Which brings us to the striker problem, which I've said it already, and I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, but here it is. Chiefs is going to start to sail it tomorrow, probably. They played him with season in both matches and people were saying, nah, they are being played because he's not part of the coach's plan when the season starts. But to me, it seemed as if they are trying to get him used to playing that, that role as a number nine so that when the season does come, he's used to playing in that position. But I will tell you now for free, Christian Saile Basomboli is not a number nine and he shouldn't be played as a number nine. Take anyone else. I would rather take him to Tuzim Tanzani, play him as a false nine and play even uh, uh, play someone as a false nine if Uguti you 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 don't have a number nine because it's clear Uguti was struggling in that position of number nines. So rather than waste Usail as a number nine, just play someone else as a false nine. If you are not really if you are desperate to play Usail, play Usail a white, play Umtans as a false nine, Om two as a false nine, no, I mean Umobo as a false nine. And then if you're playing Umobo as a false nine, He's going to be, he can trap the ball, control the ball, and then play the ball and lay the ball off to him to do some Tanzani or to him to do the Shabalala. Or basically creating spaces for Usaile to run in behind. Or even, this is another thing that they could do. Umtu, they even played him as a number nine. Because the other game that he played when he scored his first goal for Chiefs was playing as a number nine. And he, because he's so mobile, he can even do better. I'm not even counting Utuba because I know Uti, that kid, that kid, they don't favor him. They think Wingan or whatever reason that they've decided not to play him as a number nine. So I would rather have a very mobile person who's a ball player who knows how to make the correct movements and who can, who I can favor when they get the ball with them. Uguti, they can do something with the ball like Umtutu Zimtanza, like Umtutu Shabalala, or even Ukosang Pilengob. And then the other people, their job is just playing the ball wide, cutting it back, or whatever, whatever, whatever. Because we've seen this, it works sometimes. If you're playing as a false nine, you don't need to be big. The person who made this whole false nine thing trend was Messi. And look at how small Messi is. We saw Women's City, who Guardiola has been playing above Phil Foden as number nine, as a false nine. Look at Phil Foden, how small he is. They were still dominant before Uhalan came back again and took us back to the traditional number nine thing. But if the Chiefs are having a problem with a number nine, just play the false nine rather than playing someone who's Lali Nine, Abe offside 20 times in a game because that's not their position and all they know what to do is trying to run in behind. What is my score prediction? This is difficult. For me, it's always difficult. And I will not, I will not give a score prediction if we're being honest because my predictions are always based on my heart and my heart is always wanting case the Chiefs to win. So I won't give a match prediction, but I will ask you to give me a match prediction down in the comment section below and tell me why. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I will see you on the next one, Stadiumi and wherever. And until next time, remember, Ikosi, Alpelumoy.